Welcome back. It's probably no great surprise that given where we are today with COVID-19 and our struggles with it, that there's a lot of attention being paid to what authors of fiction are doing with pandemics or, or plagues, and that we would see some of this covered in news outlets, particularly something like NPR. And I think it's a good thing uh, because it does focus some attention on literature and what it can help us with, what, how we can uh, deal with things through it, how we can understand things better through it. And that's always a positive thing in my mind. Now, the Melissa Block piece uh, on NPR does focus mostly on relatively recent works, 20th century uh, and 21st century works. But as I indicated in my last segment, there really is a much longer history than that and dates back at least to the Greeks and Oedipus the King by Sophocles. And that's a um, really a tragic story, quite literally, uh, that opens with the city of Thebes, where Oedipus is the king, uh, besieged by, devastated by a plague of unknown origin. Crops are not growing, people are dying. Uh, it's just a bad situation. And uh, Oedipus makes the promise that he's going to get to the bottom of it. And that um, and he learns that the only way to save his city is to um, basically out the source of the of the plague and free the city from the pestilence. Now I'm not going to spoil it for you if you haven't read it, but let's just say it doesn't turn out all that well for Oedipus, and he is quite surprised by what he learns in the course of his efforts to figure out what's causing the plague. Uh, Great work, you have to read it. So go back to it if you, uh, if you haven't read it or if you have and it was a long time ago, it bears uh, a, a return visit. Beyond that, obviously, we've got uh, Boccaccio, which we've already talked a little bit about. Uh, the Mask of the Red Death is a work that is included in the readings for this week and that is a classic Poe story. Uh, the Plague by Albert Camus, and that was one that is mentioned in the block piece. More recently, we have Blindness by Jose Saramago, a Portuguese writer, and Nemesis by Philip Roth, which is a work that um, looks back at the polio epidemic. Uh, and that's a, a more, much more recent work, but um, very interesting if you have an uh, interest in that uh, historical um, piece of the polio epidemic. Now, one of the things that I think, I hope you noticed in the NPR piece in the discussion of the plague by Camus, is the fact that it is read uh, oftentimes allegorically. And there's a good reason for that. In fact, most of the works on the list that you have in front of you here can be read allegorically. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about why that might be the case and, and why pandemics or plagues work so well as allegorical devices. So I'm going to uh, advance us here. Um, so an allegory, as uh, I'm going to use the term here, is a work that fulfills some rhetorical purpose, whether it's educating, persuading, moralizing, scaring, it could be really any, any kind of rhetorical purpose, but it does it by means of transforming some phenomenon that could be an idea, an event, an action, uh, that you know, those events could be pandemics, the idea could be communism, uh, could be really anything. But it's a transformation of that phenomenon into a figural narrative. And that is really the, the crux of an allegorical representation. And I think plagues, pandemics work so well in this regard because they enable an author to uh, really attribute uh, illness or sickness to a, an entire population. And as you can see, that it has some real benefits if you're trying to uh, articulate that there's something wrong with what's going on in society or that we need to somehow cure ourselves of something. So it's not a surprise, I think, that you see so many authors turn to something like a plague, an illness, a pandemic as a way to illustrate a larger rhetorical purpose about a problem that they might identify in uh, our larger society. Uh, at this point, if you haven't done so, I'm going to ask you to go back and take a look at the Poe story. I'm going to pause this recording here so that you can do that. Um, and then look at the Slate uh, article that is an interpretation of that post story uh, as an allegory. And I think uh, coming out of what we've just talked about and my definition of allegory, 
uh, you can probably see some of the pieces fall into place and uh, understand that that post story a little bit better in the context of our, our current situation. So I will uh, join you back here after you've had a chance to look at that post story again, and uh, we will continue at that point.